the journalism she reads. Technology is everywhere. Every industry needs it. So whatever she's interested in, start with that. Just be like, all right, so you like watching YouTube videos. Why don't we make a project to analyze how people are watching it? Grace Hopper's celebration of women in computing coverage continues in a moment. Live from Houston, Texas, it's theCUBE. Covering Grace Hopper's celebration of women in computing. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Rick here with theCUBE. We are live in Houston, Texas for the Grace Hopper celebration of women in computing. The best name at tech conferences, bar none. Uh, we're going three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is day one. They had the keynotes earlier today. Expo Hall is buzzing. And we're really excited to have a return guest that we've had on way back since the beginning and a new guest, Sarah Clatterbuck, who is the Director of Engineering for Applications Engineering. Did I get that right, Sarah? Application Infrastructure. Yeah. Infrastructure, mm -hmm. very important. And Erica Lockheimer, Director of Engineering Growth and Head of LinkedIn's Women in Tech Initiative. Mm -hmm. Those are huge titles. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. And of course, Rebecca Knight is joining us. Yes. She's been uh, anchoring, anchoring the set all day and we'll be really to ha happy to have you on board. So, Thanks. the LinkedIn's Women in Tech Initiative. What is it? Yeah, so uh, it's basically, it's a dedicated group that we have at LinkedIn where it's 20% focus of our time. So Sarah and I commit 20% of our time for women in tech. 20%? 20% of our time, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, it's, it's basically valued just like any other core project that we have in engineering. Uh, and it's a program that we have initiatives inside that's happening inside the company and outside the company that we focus on. So yeah, because yeah. often you're like the Google's got like the ten percent, or you're, a lot of companies have ten percent, but twenty percent that's one yep. day a week. That's a significant amount it's of a time. Substantial commitment, and I think we started initially like a lot of other companies where there were a core group of us women leaders who were doing this on a voluntary basis, yep. and we would plan our Grace Hopper event, and we would do you know, uh, different lectures and talks internally, but then we realized that we actually needed to commit real time to this and have objectives and key results that we were trying to measure our outcomes on the program. Yeah, so, and, and our executives approached us and said, hey, will you lead this? And we wanted it to be a change initiative, not an ERG group. So we have funding, we have programs, yeah, it's a true commitment. I was just going to say from the keynotes earlier, they said, you know, kind of what separates the top companies from the not top companies, and one of the items was, you know, flex time policies, leadership development programs, but, but true gender diversity programs that are, mm -hmm. that are not ad hoc, mm -hmm. that are not kind of feel good, but you know, have, like you say, have funding, have budget, have executive sponsorship, yep. and are just like any other project that you would want to successfully execute in the company. Yeah, and you want the people that are in the trenches leading it, right? They know exactly how, what should be done and how we're feeling and, and what we should do moving forward, so. So talk a little bit about the specific programs that are part of the initiative, uh, the, the high school training program and the other kinds of things that you're doing as part of? So I'll, want to go ahead? Go ahead. Um, yeah, so I'll talk about the high school trainee program and then maybe we can kind of round out some of the other programs that we're working on. So the high school trainee program is something we've just completed our second year running. The first year was very much a pilot and our hypothesis was that if we expose young girls to what it was like to be a software engineer in a tech company before they had to make that decision about what they would study in college that we could influence their decision about what they would study. And the first year we came out with all but one declaring that they were going to study computer science. And as we followed up with them, it's been amazing that even the last one has now switched her major to computer science. So really encouraging results. This year we expanded the program a little bit. We had 10 trainees this year, similar results. So I'm really looking forward to trying to scale that program in upcoming years. And were these high school girls who were at Incline toward um, computer science or were they? They had uh, some experience with programming, okay. but we were more hiring for potential than for actual skill set. So they had some exposure either through uh, coursework at school or through um, immersive community programs like Girl Scouts or Technovation. And then we actually brought them in and did, uh, this year we 
developed a curriculum for them where they actually built a full stack web app uh, in their first couple of weeks to get a sense of how the whole thing goes together. And then they pivoted towards working on actual features with our engineering team. So for the day in the life, do they participate in stand-ups? Do they, do they yep. shadow you? Yep. Do they go out to lunch? I mean, yep. Every, everything, everything like a regular engineer. Sit in yes. and, uh, <laughs> we bore them with meetings just like everyone else. And, and they, they came out and they wanting more. It. So. They want more, yes. <laughs> they came for our lip sync competition that we ran, so yeah. It's so a good so what did they say is different than what they expected it to be, or what was it that appealed to them, or, or that kind of connected to them that maybe they thought it was, or they had no idea that this was, because a lot of that stuff's just kind of yeah. work. Um, yeah, I besides mean, I think, the coding piece, right? Yeah. I think they realize when they come that it's really much more social than they thought it would be, so even, even though I think the media is portraying computer science in the right way now, and even though they've had exposure in classes, I still think that they have a perception that it's going to be a lot of heads down coding work, and they don't realize how social coding is and how much you have to interact with the product managers and the design team and all the other engineers that you're working with. And so what are some of the other parts and components of the um, Women Who Lead? Yeah, so one of the other programs we have is an invest program. So we want to invest in the women at LinkedIn as well. It's about giving them visibility and opportunity and, and coaching. So if we think about some of the ways that we have grown in the company, we have people that chose to invest in us, got us the right resources, worked on some challenges and also opportunities. So we designed the program based on how did we get where, where we're at and we basically have executive coaches come in and we're training some of the women to basically go through some of those challenges just have those difficult conversations and be able to have those, those outcomes that they wanted and it's great to see they come full circle and now it's like they want to pay it forward. Like they're here at this conference, they want to just you know, figure out how they can do it for everybody. It's like once you get that, that itch and you've made that pivot point yourself, you're like, wow, I really want to give back and make right. a change. So we're seeing that in a lot of the conversations at LinkedIn and the women. So it's great, super inspiring. Uh, I, yeah, go ahead. I'm Last sorry. month you launched LinkedIn Learning. Yes. And so your platform is used by 433 million users around the world, and yet your company's always innovating, always trying new things, always coming out with new features. Can you talk a little bit about LinkedIn Learning? Yeah, well I think the way that we're thinking about it is that in, in this new age that people need to learn in different ways. They don't always have a traditional path of like a degree program and then an internship or, and then a job that they go to for 20 or 30 or 40 years. I mean, people are changing jobs, the, the technology is changing, industries are changing and people need to have different paths to keeping their skills relevant in the new economy. And so I think that's sort of what LinkedIn learning is about and then I think we're also thinking about how can that sort of expand our hiring practices and, and actually can we use that platform to identify people with potential to come work with us. And we even gave all of our high school trainees a subscription uh, this year when they came so they could continue their learning online around Java or web development and different topics that they were learning during the summer. Yeah, because if you think about how we're hiring talent today, I think we've done it very traditional to Sarah's point. It's like, you have a four-year degree, you, went, you did your two-year internship, we'll then look at your resume, then we'll interview. Right. It's like not everybody has taken that path. Maybe they taught coding themselves, or maybe they did some you know, academy and they, and they threw some two-year boot camp or, or something. There's no reason why we shouldn't be basically looking at them and figuring out, hey, how can they join our company and basically contribute? I mean, that opens up a whole diverse, uh, diversity in itself by, by hiring different types of people from right. different backgrounds. Um, and, and LinkedIn really, it's, it's, it, this is the business of LinkedIn, it's helping yeah. people find opportunities, and yet you're also evangelists about how the, the, the future of work is changing, yep. and the nature and, the, and our day-to-day -day experience of work is changing. Um, my question is, how, how open are other companies to drinking your Kool-Aid in the sense of are, are other organizations and firms that you work with also seeing this changing path and are they open to it? To being different. Yes, actually I was at Talent LinkedIn Talent Connect uh, last week and we had a small forum of about 15 people of the top companies around and we had this very 
open discussion and they're realizing, yes, we need to look at hiring differently. And um, I know Starbucks has some initiatives and some programs too about helping them get the right skills so they can get to where they want to be. So it is about solutions like LinkedIn Learning or how do they, we up-level the skill force. Um, I think everybody's open to it. It's just, we're not there yet. It's right. making these small steps as we well, move that's along. That's other companies. I was even just going to ask within Forbal HR at LinkedIn, um, you know, how much do they buy into it or how much of it, okay, that's great. They're working on this, this cool project, but when people are coming through the door, we're routing yeah. them through the same kind of process, the same kind of gates or, you know, how's that conversation? Are they, are they accepting it? Is it a hard conversation? Do they see benefit? Oh, I think I think the whole company is bought into this, you know, from every discipline, from HR and engineering and the executive team. I think everyone's starting to think about this uh, in in new ways, and so um, we're everyone's on board with helping us to change how we hire, how how we can be more inclusive as a company, and how people can belong in our company. Right. And they are our key partners in designing this program. You're right, you can't like use your same program that you have today of how you hire talent, you have to do it a different way. Right. So maybe if they fit this mold, then that's the way that they're going to go on this hiring. But you know, there's a new way that we have that we're designing right now that we basically get candidates that way. And so well, they're partners in it, they have to be. There's, there's no other way. Right, right. Yeah. And then how does it manifest itself in my LinkedIn profile so that the yep. Starbucks exactly. and the other people now see those as qualifications where before you know, it didn't kind of fit the template, yep. if you will. Yep. We have to innovate, we have to be the pioneers. Since you are head of, high up in engineering, also high up in HR, talk about what, give some advice to a young female engineer who's starting out, some career advice in terms of what she should have on her LinkedIn profile and then also the kind of message she should be sending to her prospective employers. So I would say you need to have a LinkedIn profile. <laughs> first step one. Yeah. I think you're doing pictures Not in the hallway, right? Yeah, you're just down at the Don't get a shared house. picture that's chopped off in half. Get a picture of yourself. And, and, and <laughs> fill it out, not just, not just with your schooling, because if you just put your schooling in your degree no. program, then you're just giving us the same information that we've always had. Like, tell us about who you are and what problems you want to solve and what interesting experience that you've had that may be non-traditional. Like, try to try to explain through your profile stand out from the how, how, how you can stand out. Um, and then I would say, like, take some intelligent risks. Like, you have to you have to take risks. You have to be out of your comfort zone. So even if that means putting non-traditional experience on your LinkedIn profile, that you know that's what you have to do to succeed in this industry. And and, and, and our, just as you're saying this, I'm just thinking of of listening to the ads online of the resume sniffers and the you know good mm -hmm. good employee bad employee are, are the you know kind of the algorithms that drive the the automated part of these processes knowing to look for wow that was kind of a high risk behavior that this person stepped out of their comfort zone in a box i mean it still seems like you know or, or, mm. or what do we need to get there maybe is the the better question so that it does flag positive thing that this person has this kind of non-traditional block on their on their LinkedIn profile. Yeah, I think that, I think you're talking to some innovation that we still need yeah. to do. Maybe maybe in our like recruiter platform we could have some different types of facets for searching that would be different characteristics that we're looking for beyond sort of the traditional education. Right. And I also think there's just ways to use the LinkedIn platform. I mean, there's great things on there as far as common connections, people that you know. I mean, that's that's relationships truly matter at the end of the day right. and be able to build them when you're here right now at Grace Hopper. This is where some of that just starts, even in college, right? So use the platform for, for what it's well, useful for. Well, Eric, I have to follow you. I haven't followed you before. Sarah's got posts constantly. It's almost no. like Facebook with all the <laughs> Erica, Erica puts that you me guys, to shame, she puts really. To shame yeah, on. So but we're I mean, ready. We're together on this. You guys are, you know, <laughs> it's, it's really great to see because you're constantly posting, you know, this little project and you this little to. seminar yeah. and this little group of, 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 I call them kids, right? They're all kids to me these days. But, you know, doing all these activities um, at a very steady and constant cadence. It's very impressive. Yeah, I, I would just add on that that I, I'm a firm believer that you do have to overpost, you have to over speak out. I mean, you can't be the ke best kept secret. Awareness is key, and then that's when it all goes viral. Just like you know, software. Think about how you can scale it as fast as possible. All right. Same so thing take applies. risks and overpost. Yes. Right. <laughs> Words to live by. All right. So yes. we're running out of time. Give you the last word. Really on great on the Grace Hopper conference. You both mentioned you've been coming for years. It, it, it fascinates me that I still talk to people that don't know what this is at, at all. So for the folks that don't know about Grace Hopper, what's your kind of impression here where we are today? 
what it's come from, and why people need to get involved? It's a movement. It's now at scale. Learn who Grace Hopper is. Come to the conference. Uh, be part of it with us. And I invite men to join us as allies here. It's amazing. And I think it's as soon as you come to the, to the conference, it's really like a wake-up call. You just, until you're here and you feel it, you're like, wow, I'm not alone. There's so many of us that are exactly the same. And it's just a feeling. You just have to come. So. Yeah. All right. Erica, it's great to meet yeah. you. Thanks for stopping by, Sarah. Always great to see you as well. Absolutely. Rebecca, terrific. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. We are in Houston at the Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks for watching. Great.